So how will you feel when you go to a particular farm, looking at their pond, and then you ask, how old is the fish there? In all sincerity, they tell you that the fish is about three months, four months, or even five months old. But this is far more bigger than your eight months old catfish. How are we? What's up and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're coming across this channel for the first time, my name is Tineye and this is Asia Mat Farms. So here we discuss how to make a profitable venture from catfish farming as well as pig farming. Pig farming. We'll get there soon and it's going to be very, very explosive. So if you're an, an unemployed youth, educated or not, you're a retiree or you just want to diversify your income, and then you are looking towards livestock, catfish, or piggery. This is where you should be. So subscribe to this channel. Turn on the notification bell so you'll be notified each time we post a new video. Like this video, share it, and then drop your thoughts, your suggestions, your observations down the comment section. So today, I'll be showing you the secret to a bountiful harvest. How to make your fish grow very, very fast. Okay? Now, I've done a video on how to feed a catfish. I've equally done a video on some common mistakes some catfish farmers make. Okay? I shared a lot there. I talked so much about nutrition there. I don't know if I've talked about our feed. We give our fish a uh, feed produced by us, which they eat at the melon stage. Apart from the fact that it's way cheaper for us, we source the materials ourselves, and it's way cheaper for us. It sprouts their growth very fast. But apart from that, apart from feeding them well, apart from all those ones, apart from taking those precautions which I've shared, there are equally so many things you should also take note of. And that's why I'm here. Okay? So number one of them is the quality of your fingerlings. <laughs> now why buy you your fingerlings? If you're not doing your hatchery yourself, if you're not hatching your catfish yourself, you should take note of the quality of fingerlings you're buying. How do you do that? By making sure you are buying from a reputable hatchery. Okay? Now, because if you make the mistake of buying runs, that means that's the beginning of your, of your loss in catfish farming. Okay? Because those ones, they don't eat well. You know those ones that when you're feeding them, when others are eating, they will be hanging at various edges of the pond, feeding on algae. <laughs> those ones are runs. And if you should get them, that means there is no way you're making your, your capital talk more of your profits. Let me explain for them. For instance, a woman gives birth to 10 children, okay? And you place them under the same place, same atmosphere, feed them the same food, give them the same treatment and all that, okay? The youngest of them in catfish is known as runt, okay? So you should avoid buying runt at all costs because there's no way you'll be getting your money. How do you know runs? They don't eat well, they don't feed well, they don't convert their feed well. They will just be there wasting space for you, okay? Now the next one you should take note of is sorting. What do I mean by sorting? You've seen a video on how to feed a catfish. And as you have seen why others are feeding, we see some small ones that doesn't want stress, they don't want those gentle ones. Why other ones are aggressively asking for the food? Those gentle ones don't want stress. They don't want anything to stress them. And as well, they will not grow as fast as others. Now, what happened next? What happened is that, as you know, as some of us know, that catfish is a carnivorous animal. So those big ones will be feeding on those small ones. They will be swallowing them. So if you should keep them at the same pond, the big ones will keep on feeding on the small ones. Okay? And, and that means you will not be getting your money. You will not be getting the money of that small ones. Okay, for instance, you stock 2,000 fish and you don't sort them. By the time it gets to maturity stage, if you, should, if you should harvest about 800, that means those ones, they love you so much. That's why they decided to stay at 800 because you should be getting less than that. Okay, so periodically you should be sorting your catfish. Like once a month, you should be sorting your catfish. Sorting means 
separating them into different sizes you should separate the big ones should be these big ones you should separate them at a different point the medium ones and then the small ones each one will be the, with their sizes okay you don't leave all of them in a particular pond because the big ones will be feeding on the small ones okay we hatch these fish we hatch them same day so let me show you their sizes so you can see that they are of different size but after sorting them you have to separate them in different ponds I just don't want to speed them now, I want to show you. Now see this one. These ones are the, the biggest. There are the shooters among them. Can you see? So these ones are the medium size. Let me show you. we are hatched on the same day so imagine what will happen if we would have left this very fish and the other one on the same pond it then means all these ones will be gone okay the all these ones in this pond they will be gone because these big ones will be feeding on them all these fish here about about 650 of them will be gone okay so that's what i'm telling you about certain so the next one is stocking density. Now, stocking density is the number of fish stocked per square meter. Okay. Now, for instance, if I should, if I this very pond, if I should stock about two thousand fingerlings there, the two thousand fingerlings should not make it to maturity because as they are growing, they are occupying more space. As they are growing, you should be reducing their numbers. And stocking density is one of the things you shouldn't ignore in catfish farm because it affects the growth, it affects the water quality, and it as well affects your productivity, your profitability, okay? You should also know that that overstocking doesn't mean that you're producing well, okay? So you should take note of your stocking density, all right? Overstocking, you should know that as they are growing, a lot of activities are going on. This is where they eat, this is where they defecate, this is where even when they vomit, it's all in this pond. So a lot of activities are ongoing. And then when you overstock, it requires that you will be changing the water often. You should also know that when you overstock your catfish, they will be competing for food, they will be competing for oxygen, they will be competing for space. And it then means that a lot of energy is being expended, okay? And then this energy is what should have been converted for growth. And then at the same time, when you're understock, it then means you will not be maximizing your space well, okay? And that means, and then fewer fish will be in the pond, and those ones, they have the tendency of feeding on algae, all right? So please make sure you know your optimum stocking density. Then the next one, which I consider one, the number one you should do, is your water quality. Now, the quality of your water plays a huge role in your catfish farming business. Now, there's one thing I want you to know. That your water is clean, that doesn't mean that it's habitable for your catfish. Alright? So, you should take note of all these things I'm about to tell you now. About the quality of your water. And one of them is dissolved oxygen. Now, in African catfish, your dissolved oxygen should be maintained and monitored between 4 mg per liter okay to saturation level of 4 mg per liter okay because when the dissolved oxygen is reduced your fish food intake will be reduced and when they don't feed well what does it mean it means they won't be growing well and when they don't grow well it then means that the time they will it will get them to reach the market weight will be lengthened and then you'll be losing money that's one of the things that affects your harvest. Then the next one is your temperature. 
Now, what you should know is that fish, catfish, is a cold-blooded animal. And then the temperature affects them. And their body metabolism is being affected by temperature. Pressure should, between, should be between 26 degrees Celsius to 32 degrees Celsius. When it's less than that, it, it will affect their food intake. Okay? When it's, when it's less than 26 degrees Celsius, it will affect their food intake. It will stress them. They can be exposed to all forms of infections, which can lead to death. And when it's more than 32 degrees centigrade, that means the stress there can, can kill them. They will be stressed, and then they will not have the energy to fight infection, which can lead them to death. So the next one is pH. pH, as some of us know, is the concentration of hydrogen ion present in water. Okay? Now, the base for catfish should be between 6.5 and 7.5. When it's below 6.5, it it's not good because it can, it can, it can stress them. It can reduce their food intake. It can stress them. When it's down to four, that means it's very, very acidic and it can, it can kill them immediately. When it's more than 7.5, it can equally stress them. And then they will, not be, they will not be strong enough to fight infections, which can lead to death. And when it's up to 11, don't even bring your fish close to that one because it can kill it without wasting much time. So make sure you check your pH level of your water using your pH tester, okay? I think I have my pH tester. Let me show you. So this is a pH tester. This is how you look. So you, op you open it. This is how you look like. And then turn it on. And then turn it on. Okay? And then leave it to be stable. So you open it and then dip it in water. Dip it in water and leave it for like about one minute. So this one is 6.5, as you can see. So it's okay for this, the pH level of this water is 6.5. And it's okay for catfish, right? So make sure you take your pH level, okay, before stocking your catfish. Because when it's, you know, it's too high, it can, it can cause problem. When it's too low, it's not good also. So check the pH level of your water before stocking your catfish, before even feeding them or taking other things. So the next one is ammonia. You should be familiar with this ammonia. If you're, if you're watching this channel, you should be familiar with ammonia. <laughs> so when the ammonia level is high in the water, what does it mean? Tell me in the comment section. So it's not good at all. When the ammonia is high, the fish will be stressed, their feed intake will also be reduced, and then they'll be exposed to all form of infection. Tell me what causes the ammonia to be high in water. One of the things that causes ammonia in the water. Drop it in the comment section. Let me know if you're following it. What do you do when the ammonia is high in the water? You change the water. When you change the water, they will also they will be they will feel okay. They will feel relief. It seems like when the ammonia is high, it seems like keep somebody in a room without opening the window, you'll be sweating, defecating there is no good. So what do you do? is to bring the person out. Same with ammonia. When the ammonia in the water is high, you should be able to change the water and then the fish will feel good, feel cool, and then that one will be settled. Okay? So these are things you should know in order to get your fish to be growing fast. And another thing you should also know is to be observant. Please make sure you observe your fish regularly. Why feeding them? Don't just be dropping food be looking at them, check them, check out their, uh, their energy, check out their, how they pick food, check out, look out for infections, okay? And by so doing, you should be able to get your catfish to be growing as fast as it should, all right? I think you have to call it a day here. Thank you very much for staying by. My name is Chinenye, and this is Ejama Advance.